<laughs> so welcome to our annual data conference Calibra update. Um, for those of you who uh, attended last year, possibly you're going to see some similarities. Um, it turns out when you're relying on student workers and they all have summer internships, you don't get a whole lot done during the year. But we're going to go into some detail on uh, the current system, do some little tutorial exercises. Uh, we're going to walk through all our current development and our plans, and you're all going to learn a ton. And uh, we're also going to share our recent survey results, which are all kinds of fun. So, all right, what is Calibra? Survey results, the UI, current UI. Um, how you can add content to Calibra, uh, the documentation that's out there for you. We're going to talk about our plans for custom interfaces and our roadmap. So what is it? And more importantly, what is it not? So functionally, it's a metadata repository. Metadata, data about data, our warehouse, ODS, ADB, they contain data. We're just recording information about that data. We're going to source that from the systems as far as the basic stuff goes from the uh, databases themselves in most cases but then we're going to add on enriched metadata so that's user provided stuff that doesn't actually exist in a structured format anywhere it's picking the brains of the jennifer hornsby's of the world uh, we also have business terms which are kind of metadata adjacent these are business oriented um, terms words phrases acronyms um, and we're going to record information about those. So we're also going to not just record information about the data, but the business. And you're going to see how we bring it together as well. Uh, so we're going to have definitions, acronyms. Um, we're including links to additional resources and links to assets in the dictionary. So the dictionary itself, uh, we have our basic metadata, which we talked about. That's just your, what is the field? What database is it in? If it's a column, what tables are related to? Uh, we already have something in chat. Ah, can't see me. Yeah, you don't have to. Um, <laughs> you're lucky. Uh, totally lost where I was. We're going to have sample day in the dictionary. So um, oftentimes I can describe something to you, uh, but until you see it, it doesn't really register. So we like to capture all kinds of different angles to help people out in different ways. Um, we do not put PII in there. So this is not sensitive data. Uh, if we have a column that contains PII, our sample data is made up. And just like the business terms, we're going to link to resources whenever appropriate. But this is not a true catalog. So we also have ServiceNow. That's where you request access. Um, a catalog is typically the dictionary side plus being able to request access. All we're going to do is point you over to ServiceNow. All right, so um, gonna talk a little bit about data governance. That's the broader umbrella um, under which Calibra falls. So the management of enterprise data assets, including inventory of the assets, descriptions of the assets, and assignment of stewardship responsibilities. So kind of everything about the data, except the data itself. The data asset is just the stored data or something built upon the data. So your models, your dashboards, your reports, um, additional data built on top of that data. Calibra is a governance product, but we only use portions of it. So the system itself can do all these things. We're really just focusing, on, right? At least right now on that dictionary glossary aspect. So ASU's enterprise technologies, um, does have a fairly new data governance team who's doing a lot of this other stuff, uh, lots of things with stewardship, GDPR, um, and they have become interested in data lineage as well recently. So we've had lots of fun conversations around that. Uh, we're going to be working with them to support their efforts. Right now, you'll see in uh, the metadata, we have PI flags, PII flags, um, classification level stewardship team, data source, and just this random DSAR info column, which we don't actually know what to do with yet. Um, but those are all there primarily to support the data governance aspect of the data. We also have the steering community. Uh, so the steering community has monthly meetings. Uh, we discuss the project progress. 
we make decisions on interface and content and strategy and roadmap. Um, it's open to anyone. And feel free to join us, uh, send me a message or put a message in the Calibre Slack channel if you're interested. Okay, so uh, we sent out our annual enterprise technology analytics survey. Um, we have a few hundred responses. 350. 350 responses. If you haven't taken it, please go out there. There's links all over the place, easy to find in Slack. Um, so this is based on the early results and it's not it's not pretty visually and the results aren't pretty. So let's just rip that bandaid right off. Um, so the one word to describe day to day issue question, um, you might notice a pattern. A lot of people might have some trouble with the data. We did still have, I noticed at least one person who did Dixon. Um, so the trend continues. Yes. <laughs> uh, in there. I'm staring at some good ones but for the most part not so good <laughs> overwhelming difficult confusing complicated right so one of the one of our goals with the Kaliba product is to help the people with this sentiment especially now your level of awareness with Calibra massive never heard of bar now, most of the respondents were the data citizen level, so they're not people who are actually in the data for the most part. They don't necessarily need data definition, so that's understandable. Uh, more problematic is that one, the what? Like what? what is, one is it, is it yeah, it's probably one. Just... It wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't take the survey. Uh, I didn't want to skew any results. Um, two people? I volume it. two. It's one or two. Definitely not three. So thank you to that one or two people who are using it on a regular basis. Uh, tell your friends, maybe. <laughs> um, and then we have some distributions on agreement with these different aspects of Calibra. So does it provide useful information? Um, it, we, it's not terrible. We don't have a lot of strongly disagrees. But it's not good. It's not positive, right? So we've got 40%. Yeah. You got 33 <laughs> well, so these are going to be people who aren't using it daily because they're not happy with it, right? Um, so we've got 40 neutrals on that first one, but you know, lots of somewhat disagrees. Um, the second one's fun. We've got like a bimodal distribution there. Um, people generally uh, somewhat agree or somewhat disagree. There's not a whole lot of neutrals in the mix for the search bar. We're going to go into that in a little more detail. We're also going to talk about browsing the physical data dictionary. Uh, that one was a little more positive. A little bit, I understand why. Um, the terms in the glossary being helpful, a little bit positive. Um, the glossary to this point, I mean, we've got more than a thousand terms in there, but most of them are like financial related. So if you're working with student data, it's not all that helpful. Um, and then definitions usually being filled in, that's as close to rock bottom as these usually get. So understandable. And we're gonna talk about that as well. <laughs> it might be, at least not here. No. Um, all right, so phrase, what would you, what do you feel would make Calibra more useful? Um, I love the, I can't remember. So that's obviously not the person using it every day, um, but more definitions, more definitions, adding AUDB, um, advertising it, more information, more information, completeness, can't some metadata, more content, right? So there's, there's obviously a trend here. Um, and possibly the worst net promoter score I've ever seen in a survey results. Um, it's a lot of red on that screen and red's not good. We're, we're setting a baseline, right? It's about incremental progress. All right, so here's what we're working with right now. So Calibra has uh, essentially a database, um, which is Postgres based, I found out. Um, it's got a user interface and it also has a series of APIs for um, integrating beyond just the user interface. We're gonna talk about the UI right now. 
So this is what the landing page currently looks like. Um, I feel like this was annotated. Yes, there we go. Uh, so on the left, we've got some nice big links where you can browse assets from the warehouse, the ODS dash. Um, you click on any of those, it's going to give you a list of schemas. You can look, see what tables are in the schemas, what columns are in the tables. Um, did you tell them how to get there? Um, I, I don't think I did. Um, there's lots of ways. There's a link in the Calibra Slack channel. Uh, if you search for Calibra in the <laughs> analytics portal, we have a product page with a link. Uh, or you can just remember links.asu.edu slash Calibra. We'll also get you there. Um, the official page is asu.calibra.com slash dashboard, but that's harder to remember. If you just go to asu.calibra.com, that will take you to Yeah, that. you don't need the slash dashboard. That's mm -hmm. the default. Um, yeah, so we've got our different databases, basic information on all of these, as far as what data is in there, data types. Um, we're adding in column order and some other things. Um, Redshift has enrichment, definitions, things like that for a limited number of assets. Uh, we have our business glossary down here. So the common business terms. And again, that's gonna send you maybe to some external resources for some of these terms, or it's gonna link to data assets that are relevant to those um, terms, processes, acronyms. And then glossary terms. I keep forgetting there's like animation on these. Uh, we've got our search bar at the top. So, uh, maybe you don't necessarily know where something is, which database it's in, where it is in that database. Um, you don't necessarily know what the term is. It might just be in the description. You can always search for whatever you're looking for. You'll get some results, and we'll do an example of that in a few minutes. Over here, we have links to our training materials. So links to ACIU slash Calibra user. Um, those are constantly in development. Callie's point on those and adding to them on a regular basis. Uh, and then we have our links to HEIU slash Calibra Hero. And this is for people to actually add more content. Right? So if you're one of those people who entered your survey, I want more content, feel free. <laughs> you have the power. <laughs> um, go in and add. We'd appreciate it. Everyone would appreciate it. Uh, you don't have to be the world's foremost expert on anything to contribute what you do know. Did someone check it though? So, that's a right? Good point because that came up in a different meeting than we're in Phil's meeting. Yeah. So right now, the right now we're just we're taking whatever we can get, right? Chances are, whatever you got is better than nothing, <laughs> right? So. You'll see in a lot of places, I think someone actually posted in the Slack channel, they noticed that the information source was like, Josh made it up, <laughs> right? Like, right now, it's better than nothing. Um, we are, as we develop some of the integrations that I'm going to talk about, um, we're working on a process which is going to notify the SME when something gets added to an asset that they're listed as the SME of so that they can not necessarily confirm it, but if it's wrong, they can take the appropriate action. So we're going down that road. In order to do that, we have to know who the SME is for everything, which means someone has to add it. <laughs> you mean for like ADD stuff? Everything. Anything we want to add enrichment to potentially if we want to have someone sign off on it. Yeah, something like deep person view is quite the mess, right? Uh, <laughs> and we have set it up so you can have a SME at the column level, you can have a SME at the table level, you can have a SME at the schema level. So you can always override at different levels when they get mixed. Yeah. I'm just looking, uh, trying to super query. Is there a way to link on, like, so I look at Temple ID, you know, if you're randomly against you, and I noticed, like, okay, it's, it's just random. Like, it seems like there's a different definition. Both people, it's everywhere, of course. <laughs> Sometimes definition tends not, but like that would be like, could we have like an angel authority? Like, is there a way to say as many times as possible? So you have to read like anything that's common, ample ID everywhere, like you could link it to a single definition and it would just be then because I feel like we have to we have to document everything. That's the one why I think I've been there, like I don't use it more really just vastly undocumented. You know, it's like a hunt and search thing, they're like, oh, the documents weather table, yeah. it's the same term. Is that just possible in Calibra or is it 
So not means like getting that out. As far as I know, there's no great way to do that in Calibra. But that is that is something on my list. Um, Ed Plus has like their own internal data dictionary. And one of the things we did was we created like a standard list. And then some of the items, you know, this column, this table, it literally just links to that standard value. So they all match across the tables and you only have to change it in one place. Um, I haven't found a good way to do that here. Um, so far, it's like DW created date time. I literally just went in to each document, copy, find, paste, 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 paste. Um, yeah, it is something we're looking into though. There's not a great way that I'm aware of. And it is kind of annoying. <laughs> it was, it like, you know, we with Wikipedia, which we all like, which is, you know, also it's pretty accurate. We first, and that's what we all love is that all those terms everywhere are linked to the definition. Yeah. Is this something that Calibra can bring on the phone now? I, I, I would love to be able I can help pressure. So, <laughs> I will be able to see. Um, so we are planning to meet with Calibra has what they call coaches. Um, they gave us a couple of free coaching hours to discuss things like this. We're just like, we've got to get a list of items because it's not like you can use 15 minutes and you have 45 left. It, you just kind of, you have to have a session to do everything at once. Um, all right. So let's talk about browsing. We're going to find out about first gen. Go. So we're going to go to the dashboard. And I know if it's in a browse, this should have been under search, but let's go into the warehouse because that's the only place that has any sort of um, advanced enrichment. And so once we're in here, I'm not going to talk about any of the advanced filters. You have the ability to like, tweak a lot of things and save your own views and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into that right now. That'll be in the training materials if you're interested at some point. Um, so you might be tempted to go in here and just be like, all right, well, uh, maybe it's first gen like that. And you'll see a bunch of tables in the fields that are first gen. Uh, maybe it's first gen like that. There's a couple like that. Uh, maybe you're like, well, I know in searching. We're not there yet. <laughs> Um, from what I can tell, if you're searching this way, the asterisk doesn't change anything. This search is actually pretty limited, from what I can tell. Um, I just went through this, and it wasn't like this. This is why you do screenshots instead of live demos, and someone didn't allocate enough time to take screenshots before this. <laughs> okay, I, I did this a few days ago and I wanted the other relationship. That was the only way to get to work today. It wants this one. It also might be, we have some differences between dev and prod at the moment. Um, so normally you're going to see something that looks like this. So browsing, the ability to browse was one of the highest ranked items in our uh, server results. And here it just doesn't work at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's loading backwards for some reason. So we are constantly working on this and trying to get a good system to work for us and get it to do the things that we want it to do and make it as easy as possible. That is posing to be a bigger challenge than, than we'd like in every day it's something new. And we like to break it more than fix it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is normally what you see when you go into browse. So this is a list of the schemas within the Redshift data dictionary. Um, and then you could go into any of these schemas, expand something. This was going to be all filled out and our process that ran in dev just fine earlier this week did not run in prod. So 
doesn't look quite as good, but you can go in, there's your schemas, here's your tables. Uh, the tables that still have the schema dot, those are actually don't exist anymore, but we're still working on the process to delete things because the process they give us to update things doesn't actually do deletes. Um, normally, this would have a little arrow next to it, and you can see all the columns by clicking the arrow, but you can always click into an asset and see everything about that. Um, so in this case, we're supposed to be looking at first gen stuff. So here we are, and maybe you just happen to know. So I know that ASU student um, has a table, in, which is no. It's not searching again. This search doesn't do well. Hmm? No, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it the long way. Um, so we've got ASU Adam. Do we have an admissions person here? No, Kara is applicant or application. I think it's applicant. And so I know that there's a first gen field in here. Yeah, there it is. So I can always find things that way. So you can navigate the the schema, the design of the database itself to find objects within it. That's what browsing is. So I mentioned the searching within browse, not great. Um, all right, so that was an absolute disaster. <laughs> Let's try searching, see how this goes. More live demo, yay. All right, so we're going to do FAFSA this time, and I'm just going to go up here and FAFSA. So in my results, I've got some warehouse, I've got some glossary uh, in the warehouse. It's just columns. There's no FAFSA table, as far as we can tell. Um, and what I want to point out here is we've got nine results. So we've got various tables, various columns. That was what I was actually looking for just now. Um, but nine, I feel like maybe there should be more than that. Um, if I go and add an asterisk before and after, you're welcome. Uh, now we've got 34. And that's because the way that Calibra is set to parse out terms, it's, it's only breaking the ID on the dots. So it's separating out the schema from the table from the column, but within a column name, within a table name, it's a single value. So if you're not looking for a term that's exactly FAFSA, you have to use those wild cards. So the asterisk before, anything that ends with FAFSA. If I just had an asterisk after, it would be anything that starts with FAFSA. And then both of them, anything that contains FAFSA. So we're getting more comprehensive results here, but you have to be careful when you're using the asterisk because you might be searching for something that's part of a normal word. Uh, so here I might be looking for the student AY stuff. If I just go with AY, I'm going to get this. And this one's getting picked up actually uh, because it's in there. But I have, yeah, so there you go. Pay calendar, right? It's not just AY, it's anything with AY in it. So that's oftentimes you have to use the asterisks, but you want to be aware of the effects and how to use them. All right. Um, I should mention, like, obviously you can click into any of these things to get more information. Here you'll get the name. Um, if there's, additional attributes, full name, friendly name. You can see them on this page without going into the asset. Um, sometimes I think there could be additional values if you click into it, but that's what you start with. All right, so that's searching. So adding content, how to add content. Remember, content was the biggest complaint, not enough content. So all of you now, when you leave, are gonna be, you're gonna feel empowered to go to this link and fill something in, right? So this is what adding content looks like. Um, 
And again, that link, Calibre Hero, it's in the Slack channel, it's on the analytics portal page, um, it's on the Calibra dashboard home screen thing. So within this document, uh, there's a few things you need to know. Here's our summary with a few things you need to know. I'm gonna walk through them, the different tabs. Uh, one of the nuances of Calibra is we like to link things together. Um, but because we're using this Google Sheets interface for people to add things because of licensing costs and some other uh, issues, you can't just use a normal Google Sheet link because Calibra doesn't use that same linking format. So we have this tool here where you can enter the URL, you can enter the text you want it to display, um, and then you just copy and paste that resulting code into your definition, um, your information source, whatever you're trying to document. Um, and this code will actually become a link once it hits Calibra. It's not super useful in the Google Sheets, because again, different link structure, but this is what you have to do to get a link in Calibra. That's the hardest part, okay? Everything else, super duper easy. So here we have our Redshift schema tab. So this is a link of all the schemas in Redshift. And we've got links to all of the forms that have the tables and the columns within the schema. But this is also where you find information about the schema itself. Um, for the most part, this is probably not something you're gonna be adding to. And if it gets added to, it's probably just once, right? So the description of the schema, where does the schema belong within our broader business domain areas, uh, which I'm gonna talk about more later. Um, we have a link to the access request form and service now, which will pre-populate with the actual um, selections for the scheme itself. Um, you can list a stewardship team and any data retention issues that might exist within the schema. But for the most part, you know, this is filled out more at an enterprise level than a user level. What you guys are going to be mostly interested in are inside the schemas themselves. So let's go into, I don't know, who wants to add a definition? Well, that's already there. I want to add something new. Who knows something? Mark, what do you know? <laughs> okay, so in the ASU library schema, hey, look, there's Mark. What about so it's an average with what the AI play, the AI play, what do we? It's a good question. It's almost like we have a plant in the audience. <laughs> so let's take a look at the other tabs. If I can, there we go. So there's three more tabs in this document. One is schema, one is table, one is column. And so these are definitions of the different attributes that we're able to capture for each of those asset types. So here's everything we capture for schemas, descriptions about what they are. Here we go to tables. Everything we capture for tables, descriptions of what's expected to go in there. We get down to PI and PI. So it's a flag. So it's just a Y or an N. That's it. Um, it could just be null if you don't know, obviously. Well, I didn't say you wanted to. Yeah, so I was wondering there, like, do you think it will be PII? It's so probably just, I don't know. And everywhere, but I guess yes. it's kind of maybe unknown means it hasn't been answered, so it'll cost it. So, but and it means we know it's not. If so, if it's changing over time, if it becomes PII, we'd want to go through and update the definitions, right? But as of right now, if there's no PII, then and and at the table level, all you're doing is you're aggregating the column level, right? right. So, so anything has a PI. Yeah. So if any of the columns in that table have a PI equals yes, then that table has a PI equals yes. You have just one column. And so what we're looking to do is utilize that within the governance work. So student submits a data subject access request. They want to know everything about themselves. Well, what do we know about a student? Well, what do we know about anyone? We start there, right? PII. Anything that has PII. That's okay, way to so identify a person. They're potentially in there. Here's a, here's a kind of thing that I want. So, for example, 
this table has it has a student it has an identifier it's an employee. That's the ship, the same as PI. If it would be annoying if you say every word in an employee ID is PII, it's going to be like an infection and everything's PII everywhere. But employee ID is a PII. PII is identifiable information that is connected to a student. So if you have PII and um, a, a single security number, that's PII. Good, yes. Okay. That's what I think too. So, so there's definitions on the um, uh, for training what is PII as well. Um, and also, there's nobody who can understand like what connections to find a person. I mean, it's more defined, you don't have to worry about that, but it really kind of breaks down more. Okay. But, but purpose, that purpose training should go into what is I was My concern was previously, maybe I don't know a couple of years, but when I used to think used to go with that mission, that I definitely like, because it was for sure, the meetings, like there was kind of like, Anything that is to do with a person, like a, right. a name, right. a name is PII. So they would yeah. like, I'm like, oh my gosh, literally everything we do is PII and hypersensitive. So <laughs> if you connect their backend ID with their personal information, that's when it becomes a combo of PII versus here's an ID and some some facts. Uh, here's an ID with people. So you go to an place, what facts do you PII? Exactly. Well, good question. So that's when it should happen. It should be there. So, so it should break it down. What what equals um PI within my official response at this point is we're waiting for the governance team to define all these things because PII, we're not just considering PERPA, right? We've got HR considerations, we've got health data considerations. And then yeah, this is in point this is the fact that so so if you have directory data, directory level data, then email address data classification level and as long as you don't have their employee type for that um it's not considered but um like directory data is just directory data is not there public information but once you dig in further into a, a, a student set of data what their classes are what their dca sure. is anything like that needs high identifiable information to it that becomes a set of pii as a whole right so you have there's a couple different definitions what is it yeah. Visual field type, and and then how can you identify two other? It's, it's kind of on those. Um, I, I think you know, like I mean, yeah. everyone that's pretty common sense. It's, yeah. it's kind of when you get to the on the boundaries of like have an employee plus one more thing. Is this without any? Well, right. that, so we're looking to capture that additional nuance because that's the distinction between PII and PI, mm -hmm. right? So if you've just got the employee ID, even if we said employee ID is PII. One, your data classification level might be directory, so it doesn't really matter, uh, or your PI flag for everything might be no. So there's nothing else about, there's no GPA, there's none of the other stuff. Um, so. Yeah, it's it's hard because it's really a combination of those three fields in different ways have different implications. Uh, but again. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, descriptions. That in the notes. Yeah, and right. really, I agree with Josh. There's some definitions that should be posted for that mm -hmm. on the Cleaver site to help you know bridge that gap of understanding. Because there's a lot of new folks at ESU. You know, you go through perfect training, but there's a lot of new nuances to it. Like yeah. you said, but yeah, one I'm, piece of information versus a combo of information versus more. Yeah, I've seen it defined different ways in different places, so I'm waiting for the governance. Yeah. <laughs> I am passing that book. Uh, so yeah, descriptions of all the attributes for tables, descriptions for all the attributes of columns. So it's all in here. If something's not clear, let us know. We'll add to it. We'll clarify. It all makes sense to me, <laughs> right? But there's also a space in here where you can put like notes in there. If like you have those kind of concerns or, you know, if you know this string can equal something, you can always put it yeah. there and we can all, we'll see or that too. Add a comment. Yeah. It really Tag, becomes, is whatever. it but or is it PII? I mean, that's really mm -hmm. the definition. And based on the lockdown system and, and the uh, approval to get into it, there's, you know, it's not like that information is, um, in theory, I'm handing you, there's no this anymore. Right, it's that you have to log into the closest to get to that. Mm -hmm. That's something that. So, 
What are your name is offline districts? They're kind of the same thing. Maybe probably too long. Your your friendly name might be too long. <laughs> um, like dimension table. If you need to distinguish a dimension table from a dimension view, you could do that, but. Yeah. Um, so what you're saying is they're the same. Hey, look, we just added a description. Ah. Adding content all the time. Um, and so it's that simple. I mean, it's not that simple. There's a process behind the scenes that has to push it into Calibra, which doesn't currently work in production, but that's a, that's all you guys have to do. So that is adding content. You just go to the Google Sheet, find the thing you want to edit change, add, whatever. So everyone can be a SME. We're focused on crowdsourcing because I could hire a thousand student workers. I would not rely on a single one to add a description for uh, first gen, right? That's <laughs> not a good idea. Um, so it's up to everyone else who actually does know this to add the content. There's our Google Sheets link. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, the enriched data, the Google Sheet stuff right now, just Redshift. So one of the things we're working on is finding a way to automatically identify which ODS assets are equivalent to which Redshift assets. And we're just gonna point the ODS asset at the Redshift asset. Um, and mention the links. Um, if you want to document something other than the warehouse data, obviously you can't use the Google Sheet, but we can still do it. Just let us know, Calibra Slack channel. Uh, direct message me, whatever. Um, all right. So documentation, Calibra user. There's, it looks like a lot here. A lot of these are just kind of empty headers, but we do have still quite a bit. Um, so there's links to all kinds of different things. Definitions for different things on the interface. All this we're currently updating because they just made some changes. We made some changes. Um, talking about this. Um, this on the new hire links. Um, the new hire page links to the Calibra page, which links to this. Okay. So it's not there directly, but you can get there from that link. So I talked about the asterisks. There's actually other characters that affect your search. This goes into the details of all of those. Uh, there's a filter jet, We're doing some use cases. So potentially a lot of information in here. Um, if you get stuck someplace, you can always check this out or just ask in Calibra Slack channel. All right, so I have no idea what time it is or how much time we got left. No, it's 11.30. Okay. And we're going till noon. Oh. Oh, 11.45. I'm glad she's here. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to fly through the development we're doing on a custom user interface. All right. So why are we doing it? Yes, we're kind of reinventing the wheel. Uh, but the Cleaver interface is very limited. It doesn't do a lot of functionality that we want. Um, we're looking to improve the user experience, ultimately. Um, we also... We'd like people to be able to do a lot of this within the analytics portal where they already are instead of going to another system. So it's familiar. We want to make kind of an interface that, you know, resembles the interfaces you're familiar with. So we've got one that we're equating to the Amazon shopping experience, one that we're equating to the Google Maps experience. Um, we want to make it easier for the SMEs even rather than having to go to the Google Sheets when you see something's missing in Calibra. Like ideally, you just update it where you already are. Simplifying integrations, lots of issues with those. Uh, more content on a single page and being able to kind of customize the layout the way you want it. Brand standards you know, um, and additional integrations. So before I show you anything, disclaimer, no UX designers have been consulted. <laughs> the people who have done this have tried their best, okay? not designers. Um, we're really just looking to demonstrate general system functionality at this point. Okay. So first one, 
portal search. We'll, we'll get you X <laughs> Yes, it's gonna happen. It just, we're not there yet. Um, so right now our students are building a basic functionality. Um, so you're gonna have a user who goes to the product page in uh, the portal. So analytics.htd slash Calibra. Um, it's going to load this homepage. It's gonna look something like this. Um, so you've got your search bar, you've got this link over here to our alternative interface, you've got some settings information about the system, um, links to user tutorials, training, documentation, all that stuff. And you've got some filters down here for the different data sources, uh, the different types of assets that you might be interested in. So the user is going to enter search terms. And they may or may not have selected some of the domains or the other filters that are already available. System's going to run a query and it's going to give you 25 results if they've got it, less than 25. There's not that many. And it's going to look something like this, where now you've got results list. Fancy. Um, and if you clicked on one of those results, picture these together. So like it's going to expand that box and it's going to show you the attributes associated with that asset. So here we've got a field in Salesforce with lots of attributes. Um, and then here we've got a business term with just a few attributes. And some of our objects obviously don't have any attributes because we don't have that much content right now. So you wouldn't get anything additional. All right, so if there's more than 25 results, there's going to be pagination, so they can click next page, 10th page, whatever they want to do. And we're going to go to the next part of the diagram. So here, um, we've got some options for users at this point. And so we've got this settings icon over here. And if they click on that, there'll be a pop-up or something. And we've got some different functionality built within the settings. And so they can select a different layout. So maybe instead of a list layout, they want a card layout. Very familiar with a lot of different systems you're uh, probably using today. Um, we're also going to hopefully create a table layout, which is more similar to the Google Sheet. So if you want to do bulk copying and pasting from another system where you have your documentation, you'll be able to do that as well. Okay. Um, you can select different filters, update results. It's going to research, pull new results. Um, you're going to be able to select different attributes. So maybe looking at that Salesforce assets, you didn't care about most of those attributes. It's just cluttering up the screen. So you can select which attributes you're interested in and show those for multiple assets instead, especially important with the table layout. Um, uh, so the user can also go into edit mode. And what this means is that all those text boxes that we're expecting the SMEs or someone else to actually go in and enter information are going to turn into text boxes rather than just script on the page. So it's going to make it clear you can change this if you want to. Um, and any attributes that don't currently have information, now they're going to show up as well. So you can add that. Um, user makes a change, hit save, system passes that back to Calibra to update everything. And ultimately, the user dances in the street and tells all their friends about this fantastic tool. Yes, so that's the search. So here's the interface settings we're looking at. So I mentioned layout style, list cards, table, results per page, something like that. Attribute types, so it's like the attributes you want. Some of these, maybe, maybe not some of those. Uh, and then going into the edit mode. All right. So the other interface we're working on, currently branded as the business data relationship map. I think it's actually longer than that. This is the short version. Uh, we are still wordsmithing that. So what we're doing is we're mapping business processes to data assets. Okay. So this is very different than kind of what Calibra currently does. Um, so user's gonna go to the portal page, System to display the search. There's this link over here. We're going to change our view. And so user clicks on that, and they're going to be met with something maybe like this. So, list of business areas um, that we've identified within the university um, at a high level. And with each of those, they're going to have options on how to look at them differently or get to different types of content. 
Um, and that's what all those little icons are. This speech box is always in the way. Um, so I've got this hierarchy looking thing at this level. Oh, students very broad. We're gonna break that out in different ways. Um, down here, we're gonna show them the entities and relationship groups that exist within this from a business or functional level. Uh, the table, we're gonna show them the tables that exist within this space, or they click on the report and we're gonna go show them all the reports that exist for this type of information. So they're seeing that and they could maybe hover over a domain and they're gonna go, they're gonna get a little blob here. And this is what Calibra has in the glossary for human resources. You can see that and there's links to other information, et cetera. Um, they can click on one of those. And so if they click the little hierarchy thing, they're gonna see subdomains. So, hey, look, all these different types of student areas. All certain to advance. Um, the, uh, they click on the report. Right now, that probably looked something like sending them to the portal, filter based on the business area. If your reports have that business area as a tag, pre-filter, et cetera. Um, they can click on this one, and what they're going to see is what we call the concept model. Concept model is a list of entities that exist within the organization, within that area, sure. um, and then their relationships. But you have a... That's not going to work, is it? Yeah, the wires are being crossed. Oh, that's fun. Nothing we can do about that. Um, and then there are different business processes or relationships that exist between these objects, right? So this is an operational view of the enterprise, essentially. All right. So at the conceptual model, there's lots of different things they can do. They can click on one of those relationship groups. So if they click on that one, they're going to see something that looks like this. These are all the different processes and relationships between those two different objects. Okay. They could maybe have a self relationship. So if the student has multiple things they can do. They can change the name, update their address. Uh, maybe there's a relationship between more than two entities. So for instance, an academic advisor can enroll a student in a class. So these are all the different things the university does. They could hover over a relationship. It's gonna display the glossary info. They can click on one of the relationships. It's gonna show you the attributes. So here they clicked on students apply for programs. Here's all the things that are created Again, not, not necessarily data items, but functional operational concepts as part of that process. Or maybe they hover over here, they get a pop-up for a description of that process. They can hover over the entity of the document and they can click on an entity or document. Um, so down here, they are hovering over student. And they get a definition for student. They hover over the document, the application, we get our definition for that. Um, they could click on one of the objects and they'll get a list of attributes for that object. Um, they can hover over an attribute. So here they hover over test scores. We get our definition for what test scores are. Again, from a business level, hover over instructor ID from a business level. And uh, maybe they get all the information they need this way. Cool, they're happy. They tell their friends but maybe they want more. So now we're gonna go into the data. There's gonna be ways for them to do that. So they can click on various things. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna load a physical model. Um, and similarly at that top domain level, there's that little table icon, which if they clicked on that would load the physical model. So physical model looks kind of like a technical database ERD. We've got tables, we've got relationships, we've got cardinality for those relationships. Um, so they can hover over the relationships. We have a description for that relationship with some nuance, some intricacies, some things you should know when you're joining those tables. They can hover over the table itself. We'll get some enriched information. So here's our description and additional enriched attributes for that table. They can click on a table and this is still being worked on, but maybe they click on it once and they get just the primary keys. Uh, maybe they click on it again, they get all the columns, or maybe there's two different icons they can click on to get just the primary or all something. Um, hover over a column, once the columns are displayed, and they get our information. So here's our definition for class number, maybe there's some additional attributes, PI, flags, all that stuff as well that pops up. 
And ultimately, they're happy and they tell all the friends about it. So I showed you what we want. Here's what we've got so far. So this is what the system currently looks like. Uh, so we're doing kind of a proof. Huh? Yeah. How many developers? So there was. So this is being done in D3JS so far. That's the that's the basis for it. And we have one student. We had one student worker working on it who had never written JavaScript before. This is, um, this is amazing. Like you're all, this is no way for a student worker. Oh, no we're, we're we're slowly getting there. So she had an internship at Amazon this summer. Learned some JavaScript. Um, we now brought on a couple more students who know JavaScript to help out with it as well. So we're going to start making some tool progress. Um, but right now it's a bunch of nodes with connections. We've got some hover activity. They're working on the click actions. Um, right now we're doing a proof of concept with a bunch of tables that exist for the actionable analytics predictive models specifically because they're all completely documented and it's a smaller set of items. Um, so we don't have to worry about like, how do we scope all this? Um, cause you could envision this getting very complicated. If at the high level, you said, you know, student tables, <laughs> It's a lot of tables on that diagram. So uh, this is kind of how we're building out some of the basic functionality. All right, status and roadmap. Where are we? Seven student developers uh, up from the three we had in the spring who all left us over the summer. Um, we now officially have GitHub repos, huge hurdle. So we can actually start scheduling some of these integration scripts, things like that. We have four students working on the integrations. Uh, Redshift is the primary, ODS comes next, that's almost done. We're also going to be adding AUDB, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, that's almost done as well. And then we're going to be revisiting Dash. Um, and Salesforce is also almost done, actually, at least the contact object. And that's specifically the Salesforce API. So it's not the Salesforce data in Redshift. And what we're going to do is try to point the Redshift items to the Salesforce API items, which are already automatically documented because the API is documented uh, internally. We have three students working on the UI stuff, so the search as well as the relationship maps. And then, of course, always working on content. You probably see me in Slack all the time asking questions. I try to capture all that. I try to capture responses to other people's questions. You probably see the tag at Cali for Calibra all over the place. That's how we kind of do it. I also just bookmark a bunch of them. Um, so we're trying to capture all that when we can. So integrations, portal I talked about, more Salesforce stuff, um, S3 objects for the data lake, uh, gallery workflows potentially is something we can do. Um, someone created a database of ASU APIs and that's been talked about being adding to Calibra. <laughs> is that you? Yeah. Nice. Uh, Phil just did a presentation on Alteric snippets, and you're probably familiar with the SQL snippets that I keep pushing every month. Um, so potentially using Calibra to support those. Uh, Redshift shared storage as Ed Plus migrates a lot of their data out of AUDB over there. Um, ServiceNow has some stuff. Content, Ed Plus, actual analytics. Those are our primaries uh, working with the governance team. Um, one of the big ones is we've got a lot of stuff in the glossary, but we need to figure out like linking the glossary assets to the actual data assets um, on the finance side, which I'm not an expert on. So anyone who can help with that, let me know. And then we've talked about how the governance seems very interested in lineage. I've always been very interested in lineage. We're going to figure out how to make lineage work within Calibra um, because it's definitely capable of it. It's just manual. All right. That was a lot. Um, it, it wouldn't have seemed like as much if the demo had actually gone well. Uh, thoughts? Does anyone have faith? We saw the survey results. Does anyone expect that to be a little bit better next year? Yeah? Yeah. Um, I appreciate reading the entire album Slack because it's so tough to get back to paper because it then makes, you know, if I have a similar question, reminds me to merge the account. Yeah. It's just not, it's still not part of my copy. It's, it's changing habits, right? <laughs> And the goal is to make it easier and so that you can find the information that you're looking for and not get all flubbed up, right? So that's why we're always making these improvements, trying to make it better, easier, so that everybody can find what they're looking for quickly. Does anyone going to go back and start entering definitions for all their stuff? Marcus, so, he's only got three items, uh, apparently. Now that you can configure everything, 
Who was Jesus? I think the name of the story is because that would, you know, this city, people saw, I think if you go in there, like what happens, I've gone in there, you're like, okay, I'm just going to waste time and nothing got me. But like, if you took vlogging with like somebody, things are like everywhere, right? Instead mm -hmm. of searching the place, if you could say, you could just come up with another call and say, this is the main authority, whatever we're going to call it, like a standard definition, or it's like, give it a ID. And then we could link and have a list of these things. So, like, all the comp standard um, columns in the review everywhere. Let's make a so instead of pulling up all those, we could be filling out definition, et cetera, et cetera, like if you're template in your table. You would just point it to maybe an ID or a link, or whatever, and that would tell the system we have an extra compilation step. And I don't know how you're getting to alter it, but we could just say it'll just go and look for that, look up the standard one, and then we would have you know an encourage having an expert. It would just I think we just reduce the problem right now because I think right now it's just too it's completely normalized. Yeah. This, this effort and it's. You just I, end up with the problem so, of cut, cut and paste everywhere. You know. Yeah. So I have a question too. I mean. Is it, I know you're from crowdsourcing, a lot of mm -hmm. um, subject matter experts post in the Slack channel, are, and then are they paying, hey, can you add this? The, I, I, mean, I, I tried that for about a week. <laughs> it's hard to be just having a weekly breakout, um, or a week, you know, a couple of things with the subject matter, hey, you're supposed to know, so let's get it in. And getting them familiar, just getting it added because it benefits them from having to re answer the questions on their feet, which they do too. So, they're yes. going to be helpful for them in the long run. But to see that, like, let's, let's, I think that's it. our goal to yeah. get to that point. Sure. At this point, we've, we're we've, not we've quite tried a couple yet. times, a couple different ways. It's a challenge to make it clear that this helps them in the long term. I well, think, and I think, like, uh, if there's like a weekly, um, Let's go through the ones that were answered. Let's just get them in because a lot of people don't have the time. But if you set the time on their calendar and it becomes a habit, and everybody's involved in that, and they can go through their week responses, weekly responses in what's where that data or whatever. Yeah. Um. I know I had to do that with some teams. We do. We still have weekly to go through and review stuff. Um. It really helps get those things done because it's you're like slowly getting tackling the beast. You know. Yeah. Problem right now is like, thus me is essentially Jennifer Hornsby, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's not okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. just add it. And actually, she, we, I just talked to her before this and she's like, hey, I have some things to update. How do I do this? I'm like, yeah. I go to a presentation. Pre I, well, I told her that. <laughs> And then I was like, we actually need to pick your brain to see how we can get some of that stuff out of her yeah. and update it and make sure that like these nuggets, I'm like, I appreciate you putting it yeah. in the channels, but yeah. I need it here too. But so you know, we're, we'll be end up meeting with her and figuring that out. Maybe yeah. a meeting. It's solution that's always the one that works if you put the time on the calendar and yeah. you just sit back and take notes. Yeah. And I completely agree it's... with that. Oh, I've gotten stuff done yeah. with all of the, the, the folks who have the brain knowledge. <laughs> At and, this and point, I think... I become their, I become their, yeah. their typist during that process and they do yeah. my the review. And we, need to, we need to get the Calibra and the, the Google Sheets to a point where it's usable so that we yeah. can point people to that. So we've been focusing on that, and now is going to be more of that content stuff. Yeah, we've like been changing out the attributes and the layout, and how are things linked together. Yeah. And but you guys know like how to get it in. Them yes, the knowledge absolutely, absolutely. Yes, it's it's getting We're the time on their calendar so that I can also get on my calendar. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> and then as you saw that list, we're kind of the other thing busy. You can put a time limit on it, say for the next three months we're gonna meet. Because after that point, once they get more and more familiar, they'll just start to do it. Right. Oh, you're you're probably hundred yeah. percent correct. I mean we're or meet once, you know, once a month instead of the right, right, less right. work right, right as well. Okay. And uh, hopefully she can point somebody yes, on our team. Because because it is the one person. For the two people, yeah. and they're it swamped, is. Mm -hmm. um, and pinning them down is difficult. The other thing but, is, that I think I, I, I Jennifer helped me, and yeah. both Jennifer has helped me over time, mm -hmm. and other people. 
And so there are, and I see things in people, I'm like, yeah, I do know some of this stuff, but I'm always a little bit nervous because I'm like, oh my gosh, if I did this and then I'm like, and it's I'm off. Just, just do it. Like, you can throw the spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks and you can change it. But, but if there's the nothing there, like we've got literally nothing. I think you feel more insane when there's nothing there. I feel like now I'm like the authority For sure. putting my stamp on this table, which is not my area at all. Yeah. So really quick to your earlier, like the common terms and stuff. Yeah, I, I do think there's a way to do it. Like right now, as I pointed out, we're still trying to figure out how to delete things from Calibra. <laughs> so we're not quite there, but I agree. Like it's something we're going to work on. It's, it is doable. Like we can build that into our integration, right? We can script it however we want. Um, so many reasons. It's almost like, and even got other 